Okay, we have moved up to the highest level of the evolutionary tree to this complex group of infectious agents called parasites. And we've said that there are basically three different general groups. The group that is composed of single-celled organisms, protozoans, a general, much wider group of multi-celled or metazoans, which are all generally in the category of worms or helminths, of which there are two different large groups, the roundworms and the flatworms. And we have these extremely complex critters now, known as uh, arthropods, of two uh, types of groups called the uh, insects and the arachnids. Um, by far, the single most important clinical worldwide protozoan uh, infecting and killing the largest number of people worldwide is malaria, or the plasmodium species. There is another significant uh, worldwide uh, uh, species of protozoan called leishmania, uh, transmitted by the bite of the sand fly, which has worldwide importance, but not so much in the United States like the rest of these. Uh, Amoebiasis, or amoebic dysentery, caused by an extremely uh, common uh, species of uh, protozoan called entamoeba. The classical African sleeping sickness transmitted by the bite of the tsetse fly, T-S-E-T-S-E, -T -S -E, uh, called trypanosomiasis. Uh, toxoplasma. Uh, very uh, commonly associated with cats and uh, cat feces in particular, as well as other things, being an important worldwide parasite. And uh, last but not least, Giardia, which we have a picture of over here. Uh, Giardia is one of the few things which you look at under the microscope, which uh, appears like it's looking back at you. This is classical appearance. Giardiasis uh, obtained from bad water in a variety of conditions. Okay, this is my very last busy uh, slide, which I'm very happy to report. But another way to think about uh, parasites, uh, the protozoans in particular, is their degree of um, invasiveness. The majority of parasites, which we talked about, probably are limited to luminal or epithelial surfaces, perhaps in the GI system. So they will, for the most part, cause a wide variety of gastrointestinal things. Some of them can be um, a little bit uh, more serious. But as you would think, as they went up or more became more invasive into the blood, into the cells, you would think they would generally become more serious diseases. And for the most part, they do. But remember, the number one principle with uh, parapsychology, which uh, applies, I think, to also many other aspects of life, including politics, is the successful parasite does not uh, kill its host. So uh, if you want to remember that many of these uh, gastrointestinal uh, parasites will stay limited to the mucosa, the, the blood parasites, protozoans, well, like plasmodium, babesia, trypanosomes will actually invade the bloodstream and red cells. And a wide variety of them will actually uh, enter cells, the small ones, like trypanosomiasis, leishmaniasis, and toxoplasma. So you can also think of it as a progression of uh, invasiveness. And thank God, I'm not too sure if you even got to see all the um, letters on here on YouTube, but uh, we're done with our last busy slide. We're going to show some nice pictures now. The uh, metazoans can be divided into two groups. If you want to equate metazoans in general with helminths, think of the round worms, which are physically round, and the tapeworms, which are physically rather flat and segmented. So we have roundworms and tapeworms as our two class of uh, 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 helminths infecting uh, man. Also remember in, in a phylo phylogeny there's a third class of worms called annelids, which is what we see in our garden, the earthworms, but none of the annelids are uh, known to infect uh, humans. 
helminths have complex life cycles, both an asexual and a sexual phase, and they involve uh, almost always many more than one other uh, organism besides man. The four most common roundworms are Ascaris, Toxicara, Strangulites, and without a doubt, the most common one, and the one you may likely even see if you practice in the U.S., Enterobius, or the uh, pinworm of the appendix. The flatworms, the most common one in the United States is Hymenolepsis, but worldwide, the uh, beef ta tapeworm, or Tania saginata, and the pork tapeworm, Tania solium, have uh, worldwide importance too. And of course, there's a fish tapeworm, called Diphylobothlium, and the specific genus and species is Diphylobothlium latum. Um, let's take a look at a pinworm. Uh, not that uncommon in the United States, usually in kids, often in epidemics. Uh, the best way to diagnose pinworms is to actually uh, take a close look at the anus and to see if you see little worms uh, crawling out, often in uh, kids who have been scratching a lot. And of course, the uh, females are about five times as uh, big as the males. The female is about a centimeter, male is only a couple millimeters. So uh, very often they're seen in this uh, in appendices as incidental findings. So if this is a appendix which looks pretty normal, or at least uninflamed, both grossly and microscopically, you may often see uh, a little uh, tapeworms in them, and uh, basically the worms stay in the gastrointestinal system. They generally don't invade into tissues for the most part, and they're often relatively asymptomatic as well. Now, it's, it's not my purpose to go into all the complex life cycles of all the parasites, but I think uh, in the case of this roundworm called Ascaris lumbricoides, I just want to give you an example of a life cycle of a parasite. I guess a good place to start is because you know that the uh, Scaris lumbricoides uh, inhabits the small intestine, and once again, females are a lot bigger than the males. Uh, let's just kind of spend a minute or two to go through this life cycle. First of all, the adult worms, which you see here, they live in the lumen of the small intestine. A female could produce maybe a couple hundred thousand eggs per day, and they're passed through the feces. Now, if the uh, eggs are unfertilized and they're s ingested, of course, they're not infectious. But if they are embryonated or they're fertilized, they can be infective as much as, eight, uh, as, much as 18 days to several weeks after they're passed. Now, these fertilized eggs can once again uh, enter, develop another uh, stage uh, now in, uh, in which you have an ovum being produced, which can be ingested by a human again. Now, these uh, eggs can also or uh, develop in the lungs and wind up uh, ascending in the respiratory tract to the larynx as well, which they're swallowed again and back into the intestine. These are very, 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 uh, probably the single most uh, uh, most important roundworm of worldwide uh, importance. So this is Ascaris lumbricoides. It's not meant to be memorized. It's just meant to show you an example of how um, parasites have these complex, both uh, sexual and asexual stages involving humans uh, as well as extra human and sometimes other animals as reservoirs as well. Well, our little beeper went off, so we're going to continue this uh, parasitology uh, quick overview into the next 10 minutes. Thank you very much.